conduct field work, collect samples, extract the DNA from those samples, and then sequence that DNA right here without ever stepping foot outside of the rainforest. This has been our first ever Genomics in the Jungle course, where we've done just that. We've had a group of students come together, and then our goal as the course instructors, along with myself, Minnie, Gideon, and Stefan, was to put together this type of training module where we could go through all of the motions of a sort of classical field biology course, but then incorporate new portable technologies where students could then take their samples and then process them. So this typically includes things like isolating DNA from your samples, um, maybe it's conducting PCR so you can just amplify certain regions of a gene that you're interested in, and then sequencing that on some type of DNA sequencing instrument. Now, in the past, um, typically what scientists would have to do is take these samples and ship them internationally to get sequenced. But now, thanks in part to portable technologies, we can do it all out here in a short amount of time. So some of our goals included rapid species identification, looking at uh, primate samples, and even looking at bacterial communities all out here in the rainforest. And to me, that provides really, really amazing opportunities to try and understand what's out here in the Amazon rainforest, and then incorporate that as teaching that can train students, as well as local scientists. Mostly, this lab was really set up to be uh, run entirely by people in Peru. So we want it in about two years to be entirely Peruvian operated without anybody from the outside having to influence des decisions about what projects happen or or even just the main science going on here. And so um, the, the idea is that we get people involved and, and this isn't rocket science and I think anyone can do genetics in, in the field. So just trying to get people to, to be able to have that opportunity. I didn't have a background in genetics, but I understand that genetics is very important to better understand evolution. Uh, first thing, pipetting yeah, was uh, a completely new thing for me. <laughs> I felt like, like most of the genetic sequence um, technologies are like, huge and it takes up the full like, whole room. But it was, there it is, just like if it's on the palm of your hand then you can just load your library and it's, it's done. In teaching more people and in this technology becoming more accessible, it means that, you know, Field projects are just going to be able to collect more significant data. You know, a master's student with a limited budget just going out for one field season can get all kinds of taxonomic and health information that hasn't been accessible before. I think, yeah, on the education side, being able to bring some of these technologies in the wet lab we did to places like middle schools, high schools around the country would be awesome. We're of course in Peru, but there's tons of really rural places in the U.S. that also don't have great access to science equipment, whether that's for education or for research. So um, the setting, you know, made this course a plus, but I think there's a lot of things I learned in here and other scientists could learn and bring back to the U.S. in really um, interesting and effective ways. If we can do it in a lab in the Amazon rainforest, we can do it in a lab anywhere. Bringing together both local and international students, I think that will be a big gain for uh, the science community. So, as technology becomes cheaper and more portable, I'm really excited about the future of not only applied science, but also science education.